used to looking at myself, <laughs> like my own face, and getting loads of little hearts coming up on the screen. So I was thinking, well, what could we do instead? You know? <laughs> so feel free to smile to um, not get you doing any hearts or anything. But yeah, it's really nice to see you and some of you I know personally, but not many of you. So some of you got some juicy stuff to learn about me and each other, hopefully, today. Um, come in, come in. So we're going to jump straight in. Hopefully this will work. So um, I'll tell you a bit about me in a minute, but first of all, I just want to think about you guys, all of us really, like about why we wanted to be hypnotists, why we want to be hypnotherapists, and how we really <coughs> perceive ourselves <coughs> and our identity around our role as hypnotists. So um, I've called it a sexy job. I'm going to show you this little clip quickly. Hopefully it's going to work. Will we have any sound? Got all the technical stuff. No, there won't be, won't be There'll be no sound. No. Oh, yeah, well, oh, well, out of your thing, it's only coming out of your thing. Yeah. Hi, everyone. It's the underwear, babes. So, take me a job, you could have come in and help me yank them up, but you're only used to taking pants off and not putting them on. Does anyone know this show? Yeah? Yeah? Anyone not know this show? <laughs> it's in loads of countries. <laughs> So she's so this is a dating show. This is a dating show. Um, it's as far as I'm aware in about I use about ten countries, first dates. They take single people, they match make them, and they put them in a restaurant for dinner and they film it all. And all the cameras are hidden so you don't really feel like you're being filmed and they get all this kind of really raw footage of people meeting each other for the first time and hopefully falling in love. And I just chose this little clip of um, the guy who was actually acting quite shy. He's a male stripper. And he's actually there being really timid. And then the girl that he's on a date with finds out he's a male <coughs> stripper. And I'm not going to play it all, but she goes on to say, come on, get your clothes off, get your pants off. And it's all a bit embarrassing. Um, <laughs> the reason why I'm telling you this um, is because the, this TV show approached me to go on this show. <coughs> yes, I'm single. <laughs> just in case anyone wants to know. Um, they didn't find me somebody, so I've ruined this story now. No. <laughs> they, um, they asked me to come on this show, and they offered to matchmake me to find me the love of my life. So this was like a dream come true for me. So I started off doing, um, these are little pictures I took when I was in a TV studio. I'm not supposed to, so don't tell anyone. Uh, they said don't take any pictures, <laughs> just between you and me. Um, they sat me down in this little white chair and they interviewed me for two and a half hours. And I thought this was going to be about me, like Sarah. This is about Sarah, it's about my life, who I am as a woman, as a mother. But what it turned out to be, most of these two and a half hours were spent talking about, I guess it's... Men. Sex. No, what do you like? The TV show. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Hypnosis! What did they want me for on this TV show? Apart from the fact that I'm you know, gorgeous, desirable, and I make a great day, they just wanted me to talk about hypnosis. And so imagine for a second the conversation between the production company and me in that there's me in the white chair. It's all black, by the way, so all the lights are off except these little, you know, these big white lights shining down your face. It's quite intimidating, even for me. I was like, this is a bit scary. Um, imagine the kind of questions that they asked me. Can you hypnotize a man to fall in love with you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do I need to? <laughs> That's it by definition. <laughs> Would you hypnotize um, your date? And then the ultimate question that we love as hypnotists is, can you hypnotize me right now? <laughs> We're all so curious in the production team. We all want to be hypnotized. Can you hypnotize us? So this, for me, this only happened a few weeks ago. And this, for me, was a little bit of an um, identity shift because I'd recently made the shift in my own mind from hypnotist, hypnotherapist to a coach. So I wanted to talk about who I am and what I do as a coach. <coughs> I coach people, I help people, and they're like, yeah, but what about hypnosis? Yeah, that's just a little thing that I do. That's just one little part. It's just a tool that I use to get a result. 
But tell us more about hypnosis. Hypnosis, hypnosis, hypnosis. So this is what I want to talk about today is how attached we become or we can become in this profession to the hypnosis part of what we're doing. Really explore a little bit about outside of the hypnosis, what else is there and who are we as people. So in my own life, my own journey, yes, this is me. <laughs> so many people say, that's not you, it is me. In my own, um, my own journey from overweight, broke, struggling, um, there's far more than a physical transformation, right? Whenever you see these before and afters, there's so much more going on than just what's happening in the body. And this Sarah over here, I have lots of love for her, by the way. Um, she was a lovely girl and she, you know, she had a good point. So she smoked 40 cigarettes a day. She was a chronic binge drinker. I would go out, I should say she, talking about myself in the third person. She'd go out, um, get really, really drunk and not remember any of it. I used to suffer terribly from alcoholic blackouts, like it's a physical thing. You actually can't make physical new memories when you are intoxicated. I, um, I put gym phobic, I claimed that phobia, like I've, I've labelled it, you can be phobic of the gym. I was seriously terrified of going in a gym, near a gym. I thought it was just full of healthy people, fit people, and that wasn't my identity, right? Um, so I never stepped foot in a gym. I used to suffer from really bad panic attacks. I didn't know that's what they were called. I didn't know what was happening. I had a double glazing salesman in my house one day because I needed a new back door. And I began to have this overwhelming anxiety and asked him to leave. And I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know why I was having these problems. I had a massive fear of public speaking. I don't get rid of <laughs> But I'm kind of you know, working on that one. That's a work in progress. Bad relationships, heartbreak, you know, back to the first slide. We're working on that one too. And basically just everything I was doing was really outside of myself. Yeah, See, does that make sense? Like seeking things outside of myself to fix what was happening on the inside. The, the alcohol, the food, the cigarettes, it was all very external and I was very reactive. I didn't really have a connection with anything that was happening on the inside. So. I'm going to skip through some other big stuff that happened and maybe save it a few for another day. Um, but I left my corporate job and eventually ended up working as a hypnotherapist. Around about £50 a session. I don't know what the going rate is now. That was um, about 13 years ago I qualified as a solution-focused therapist. And um, kind of been in this feast and famine for about 10 years, the, the first decade of being a hypnotherapist, where kind of do something, I'd bring in a load of clients, I'd get quite a decent chunk of money, like I um, I ran a whole specialist area on smoking cessation, I really loved doing that because I myself had been through that as a smoker, but I just was always kind of in these, I couldn't like get my business going on a smooth keel that it really kept me going, so it's feast and famine, I call it feast and famine. Um, but that was, you know, that, my lowest low was still yet to come, and we'll get to that. But I just want to fast forward to today so you know what we're talking about. So hypnotic coaching, a whole new world of possibility. What does that possibility look like? What is possible? And this is me. This is, all, this is just a personal presentation of my personal experience. So I'm just sharing it with you so you can take away things that might be useful and implement them if you want to. My personal experience now, the world of hypnotic coaching has meant I now work four hour a day because I spend a couple of hours in the gym. I spend the majority of my time with my kids if I can when they're not at school, when they're not in nursery. I sign up um, an average of three new clients a month. I don't really like to take any more than that. And that equates to a hundred thousand pounds plus business model for my business. So how does that sound? Bloody awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. Want to know a bit more about that and how I got there? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, oh, I thought I should say something about me and my kids as well. So these are my world. My world is um, a whole world of possibilities. But really, my world is uh, is these two. These are my kids. They've got. He's nine <coughs> four, and my gorgeous girl is going to be fourteen. So I'm a full time mama, a single mama to these two kids as well, and they really do you know, drive a lot of what I do. So what I want from you, um, I really want this, although I'm sharing my story, I want this hour to really be about you and a time as well that you've know, been busy, busy, busy in this convention, a time for you to really 
go inside a little bit and think about you and think about what your identity around your job, your role, your career, what that means to you. And really give you some possibilities of, um, I mean, some of you might be doing it already, but how you can incorporate a hypnotic skill set into your own business, what that could look like. The different ways of doing that rather than just always you face to face, even if that's on Skype, um, one person at a time. How you can get even better results, even better. I thought I was so good when I was like, I can do anything in an hour. I can change people's lives in two sessions, one session. And that was my whole kind of ethos about how I worked. But you can get even better results when you're creating more income. And to do that ethically, right? I don't like sales for the sake of selling, for the sake of making more money. This has got to be a win-win for the client. Um, so I'm going to show you what I did, how you can implement the good stuff, because I did a lot of rubbishy, bad stuff as well, and I'm going to try and leave that out, but hopefully you can avoid that, but I did make some mistakes along the way. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to give you three clear steps as to how you can implement those good bits that I did do and become a hypnotic coach for yourself. So... A moment of reflection, why are you a hypnotherapist? Why did you decide to become um, a hypnotherapist? I mean, my suggestions, that I'm just putting it out there, like, because you want to mess with people's minds? <laughs> Is that one of the reasons? Does anyone want to shout anything out? Does anyone have, like, a big, like, a short, big reason? So, uh, I go to, my, one of my good friends who I work with in military, um, suffering with PTSD, okay. and I wanted to find, but all because I was doing street bits and that from, from magic, I wanted to know what Awesome. I love it. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, I'm also a nutritional therapist and I work with anxiety and stress and depression, so I wanted to do mind and body. <coughs> I love that. Yeah. So do you work on like you know the gut and how yeah. the gut affects and Neurofixes, sugar and yeah, yeah. Diet and everything. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. I love it. Thank you. So so yeah, we have our we usually end up here because you know, something's happened to us or somebody that we know, that we love, that we care about. We're generally caring people who want to help people. But for me, from my experience, there was like this little thing that was so cool and unique about being a hypnotist. You know, like when you're at a dinner party, you're like, what, do, what do you do, Sarah? I'm a hypnotist. That's so cool. Tell me about it. It hypnotized me now. Like, I really kind of reveled in that for a little while. And um, a lot of my identity was built around who I was, you know, as a hypnotherapist, as a hypnotist, more than the results I was getting for my clients. Like, don't get me wrong, in my heart, that's what it was all about. Yeah, it was about the result, it was about the client, it was about the value I was giving. But on the outside, it kind of became a bit of my identity. This is actually um, a piece that I wrote for, um, when the smoking ban came into England about 12-ish years ago, I think, I don't know what year it is in there now. Um, and I had this little falling out with the editor of the magazine because he said, well, you can't use, the, this is the image that I asked them to put on the magazine, is you can't put that image on because you're glamorising smoking, right? Like, we can't do that. You've got to have, like, you know, the, the tarred up lungs and the willies falling off or whatever. Like, what do they put on cigarette packets now? I don't know. I don't smoke, but I know they put on some horrid things. Um, but, you know, it's my work as a, as a hypnotherapist. It was very much about joining with the client, joining them, joining them where they're at. You know, before you begin to make any changes, you've got to really, like, be alongside your client, right? Otherwise, they're not going to trust you. They're not going to buy into working with you. So I was like, you know, this is how the smokers feel. This is what a woman who smokes, she's, she's so glamorous. And just, she's, so we joined her first, and we identify with her before we take her on a journey where we're going to get that change, right? So, but it took a lot. We, we had it declined and then eventually we did get it published. So, yeah, that was a small win, but that was um, really cool. So what is the less sexy side? I'm going to keep the kind of sexy side of being um, a hypnotherapist. I mean, how many people feel like they're a client's last resort? Yeah? Which, which is cool, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's big. That's like, you, have, you can succeed where no one else has. Like, wow, for the ego, that's great, isn't it? It's like, well, nobody could help you, but you know, I can. Um, but if you are, you know, you're this last resort, you're the person doing something that nobody else has managed to do, are you really, you know, are most hypnotherapists charging for the value of that life change? You know, how much is that worth to change someone's life? To 
change the whole course of their life. Like, it, does anyone want to share what they're charging for a session? Hundred euros. Okay. Hundred and thirty quid for a two-hour session. Ninety euros. <coughs> Five pound. Free for military. <laughs> so we've got, we've got it, it's all quite similar isn't it so around between like 90 to 130 like 150, 150. 150. Euros. okay so when um, when I was living in South America I lived in South America for 8 years and I worked over there as a hypnotherapist and I worked a lot with the people in the American embassy unofficially, like I wasn't employed by the embassy but they, they ended up coming to me and I was doing something else, I had this other business while I was over there, so I was kind of busy, and although I enjoyed my therapy work, it was a little bit draining sometimes, and everyone seemed to have um, you know, anxiety, depression, PTSD, and having had stuff myself, I was kind of like, I want to like, I want to get away from that a little bit, I'm going into the thrive part of my life, and I want to get away from people that, get away from people, but just kind of not being that energy of just survival, survival. But I did it, um, you know, because the money was coming in, and I did enjoy it, but the more I felt that I didn't really want to be seeing those clients anymore. I just kept raising my prices. So I thought, well, I don't really want to see these people. So instead of $100 a session, I'm going to charge $200. And then a few more people started coming to see me. I thought, this is a bit weird, right? <laughs> I'm going to charge $300 then for a session. And then more people <laughs> wanted to come and see me. And word was getting around. There'd be these um, you know, ambassador parties and things. Oh, my husband's got restless leg, driving me fucking mad. And, you know, or send, send them to the British hypnotist. <laughs> so I ended up getting to this point where the more I tried to kind of resist and push my clients away, the more they wanted to come and see me. Um, so the most, that was probably the most I ever got to, about $300 a session was kind of like the max, where at that point I didn't really go any further. But I still wasn't quite, I wasn't quite doing the work that I felt was really meant for me. So it can be really tough, right? I know. Um, Gary and I were talking yesterday, and he's got such a positive aura that it's like anyone that comes in to see you just can't help but be lifted by that. But that wasn't always my experience. You know, I'm, I'm what I found out over the years, the reason why I had all these vices and all these issues that happened to me is because I'm actually a really sensitive soul. You know, I'm very sensitive, and I feel things, and I feel people's energy. And so I'd often find when my clients came in, I know there's lots of techniques and ways of dealing with it, but I'd often find myself thinking about them, feeling their energy, wanting to help them more, kind of, you know, I want to give more, I want to give more. So I found it really tough emotionally as a therapist to see more than maybe even just two people a day. For me, it was really, I was quite maxed out on my emotions. So I don't know how some of you, I don't know anyone, if there's anyone in this room, but I know some of you can, can get through like large numbers of clients. I just that wasn't a way for me. So I just couldn't understand really financially how I would ever move forward with this business because I couldn't see more people in a day. I could keep putting up my prices, but really there's a point as well, you want to be ethical and you know there are people out there charging thousands of pounds for one-off sessions, but I wasn't, didn't have the faith in myself, the confidence in myself to go and do that. So I was like, what, what am I gonna do? Um, and also the fact that you are helping people so quickly that you have to constantly get this new stream of clients, right? Because they come in, they want to fix one thing. You might find other things while you're there, but we'll get onto that. We'll get onto that part. So we're really talking about moving people from that place of you know survival along a little bit along in life to a place of, of thriving. And one of the best things that that I found as a coach, we'll get into like how I made the transition, is you really release the pressure of that success versus failure that we can often feel in a session as well. I put so much pressure on myself that I would you know, want to get the result for the client and I practice non-attachment now and I'm much better at, you know, so the client leaves the change, not me and all this other kind of stuff, like some will, some won't, so, so what. Um, but that, that, that pressure of success versus failure is very different when you have a longer term relationship with your client because all of a sudden it's not what's going to happen at the end of this session if I still feel like this. It's a case of we will work on what needs to be worked with and it's got a very, very different, um, very different vibe about it. So back to my story. Um, so you saw that first photo, but there was like different points in my life when my weight went up and down. 
And behind every before and after, and this is something I actually teach my clients when I talk about my story, behind every before and after is a breakthrough or a breakdown, right? Yeah, you know, that, that kind of crisis point where we can't tolerate our pain, our problem anymore. And so I've had many of these breakdowns, actually, in different, um, different areas of my life. I, the business that I built up in South America, I, I actually lost that business. Um, I lost over 100,000 pounds, the sale fell through. Um, it was very messy dealing with business people over there, and I found out I was pregnant. Um, just at the time that we were negotiating the deal, and I just, to be honest, couldn't think about anything else. I had this unexpected pregnancy. I was already a mum of one, and now I was pregnant with another child, living in Colombia on my own, and um, I, I let that go. I let the sale of the business slip through. So I lost my business. I lost my home as well. Well, I say I lost it. I sold it because I needed the money, and I didn't get much profit from it. Um, I had a broken relationship, and I ended up living in a one bedroom flat, which I was very grateful for actually. We had a roof over our heads, we were not starving, we were taken care of, so you know, this isn't a sob story for me by, by any means. So I just want to give you an idea of where I came from and, and how things have really changed for me. And, um, and I just had a baby. By the way, I think these photos are beautiful, yeah? Especially this, that was the day that he was born. Um, and I was so curious, I always been fascinated by the body, fascinated by transformation, and I was just amazed that, you know, a few hours ago, that was, was in there. So all of these pictures and all the stuff that I'm sharing really comes from a place of curiosity. I was like, wow, isn't that amazing? Isn't the body and, and the mind incredible? But of course we can't see our minds, we can't see inside what's going on. So this is where, for me, the body stuff, comes into it because we can, there's a clear, obvious evidence of what's happening. Um, so my breakdown of many, um, but this particular one at this point, was that um, basically what the hell was I going to do because I couldn't see clients anymore. I had a little tiny baby that was dependent on me, I had a nine year old child that was dependent on me, I was living in this little flat so I couldn't imagine where, where, where am I even going to put a client if I could get childcare for my kids. How am I ever going to earn any money again? So that's the position that I was in um, three years ago. So just skipping back a little bit, um, and I'm conscious of the time because I've got so much to say. Um, when I first set up my hypnotherapy business, you know, I did I did quite well out of it. I had quite a good reputation. I was often in the press. I developed my own brand. I've got a marketing background before I became a hypnotherapist. I worked in corporate and marketing and consumer psychology. So. Um, I liked it. I don't want to give the idea that I wasn't enjoying it or I didn't love it. I did really like what I did and I, and I had fun with it and there was a lot of stuff I saw. Um, I'd see couples together at the same time, I'd do hypnobirthing classes, I'd help people with their fertility. But I just liked being able to do anything. I had no niche. I would just see whoever kind of came to me, whoever needed my help. Um, and again, this is something that I've really changed in my business structure now. So how's a single mama? Aren't they gorgeous? My kids. These are my kids now. Um, how's a single mama going to survive? What's she going to do? Um, how's she going to go forward? So, what happened to me in this moment of breakdown? At this point, with you know, one bedroom flat, no money coming in, just had a baby. Somehow, with all that going on, I really cared about my body and how I looked. <laughs> That's the truth. I was like. Everything is so fucked up right now in my life. I'm not having this either. I'm not having this postnatal flabby. And it wasn't, you know, everyone expects postnatal. It's going to take a little bit of time and, and work to make some changes. But for me, it was like, I'm not, I'm done. I'm done with not taking care of myself. I'm done with not prioritizing my wellness. I'm done with not putting myself first because whenever I was suffering, nobody else was okay. Right? And some of my friends and mum say to me, like, I don't know how you do that, so I don't know how you just spend five grand on going to Costa Rica and spend that money on my kids. Because if I'm okay, and I'm learning, and I'm growing, and I'm doing stuff for me, that's two, three, four times the investment that they get from that every time I do something for myself. So 
I just decided I wanted to transform my body, so I signed up for um, this mummy makeover online course with a really great and renowned personal trainer who runs courses for mums that have just had babies. And I thought it was amazing. I thought she was amazing. The information I got about nutrition, about hormones, about stress, um, about exercise, because you know I don't, I'm not a PT or anything like that. It's just a passion of mine now. So I got all this information about my body, about how to change my body. And then she had a module on her training that was like mindset. We all hear this word, don't we? Mindset. Mindset for weight loss, mindset for health. But she didn't really tell you anything. She didn't really say how to do it. So you need to manage your mindset. You need to manage your stress. Um, and what do people say? Like going to have a bath, don't they? <laughs> you know, what recommendations do people give that don't have the kind of tools that you guys have got? They're just saying, Take time for yourself, read a book, have a bath. You know, if you've got a screaming baby, those things aren't really possible. So I put this proposal forward. I was so blown away with what she did and how she did it. I approached her and I said, listen, I, I've got these tools. I've got this toolbox of really cool techniques that will really help people move forward much faster with what you're teaching them about their bodies and how to get fit and healthy. Are you interested in talking about it? she said yes cool so I put together this little presentation um, you know there was my baby breastfeeding and all the stuff other stuff going on I'm like yeah just like it's like mummy finish this <laughs> bit off and then you're cooking the dinner so I put together this presentation and I was like how much am I going to charge for this like where do I just get this number from so I was lucky enough to have a few of my friends were entrepreneurs and some of them were millionaires so I thought they might give me some advice which they did um, so I put this forward and I was so happy and proud of it. I was like, this is like, this is groundbreaking. No one's ever done anything like this before. This is fitness for the mind. This is this is even beyond mindset. You know, this is like deep, deep, like rapid change work and all juicy stuff. I was like, yes, this is it. Um, so I incorporated all this kind of like hypnotic tools and other stuff into this package and I called it Fit Mind. So I put this proposal forward um, to this personal trainer woman, she's got a very, very big um, audience, she's got a huge mailing list, she's got a huge presence on social media, she's been the front cover of women's health magazines and all that kind of thing, so I thought this would be an amazing platform for me. And um, she said no. She said no, I think it's a bit too expensive. And I can't even remember now, I, I should go and check the emails, I can't remember um, what I'd proposed to her. Um, but she said, I don't know what I thought it would cost, but I just, I didn't think it would be that much. And I thought, how could she say no to this such a good offer, what I'm proposing? Um, so I went back to my millionaire entrepreneur friend and said, I should know. <laughs> what am I going to do now? You know, so I put all my energy into this. And I thought, you know, this is going to like, save me and my kids. And he said, do it yourself. Why don't you do it? Why don't you take this product that you've developed to the market yourself? Me? Me? But nobody knows who I am. I don't have an email list. I don't use social media. I'm going to put photos of my kids. But I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I'm busy. How am I going to build a, like a whole business? <coughs> and he said, I really think you can do it, Sarah. I really think, you know, you, you can take this forward. So I thought, what, what other choice did I have? I'd like to say, yeah, I was so brave. But no, I, was like, I didn't have any other choice. Like, I'm going to run with it. So I started developing this idea. I called it FitMind. It's not called that anymore, um, but it did start off as, as FitMind. It's just about to have a, a rebrand. Um, so in 2016 to 2017, it looked like a six-week online group program. So I decided what was really like a, a good amount of time for someone to lose a bit of weight, to start beginning to notice some changes. Six weeks seemed like a long time when I was used to having people like once or twice in front of me. So it's like, right, I've got six weeks with people. That's a really long program. I thought it was worth, these are just like, you know, a little bit made up and a little bit of market research that I did at the time. I thought it was worth about £700, but I really struggled to sell it for £100. So I would have on my website, you know, I did a sales page and, you know, sign up page and it would say, you, know, you get hypnotic downloads worth X and you get um, training presentations about nutrition and fitness worth X and you get all this and it's like, you know, worth £2,000 at your price, 300 or whatever and I couldn't sell it. I do wrong, I know about marketing. 
So I did sell a few, um, around £200. Sometimes I'd have to discount it to £100 because I didn't want an empty course because it was a group course. I don't want five people in it. I want to try and fill it up. So I was kind of desperate um, to sell it and I was making about £500 a month maybe, just like getting by on that with a little bit of help. Very lucky in England that if you're a mum on your own with your kids, you get some support and some tax credits and some help. So we were never going to starve, but £500 a month really wasn't, you know, it wasn't putting shoes on my kids' feet, that's for sure. So um, the following year, so I kept plugging away at this, kept doing it. I was still seeing some one-to-one -one clients as well, because my little boy was getting a bit older and he went to nursery, and I thought, I miss seeing people, miss real people. Like, today, I'm kind of touching all that way. Um, you know, I like real people. I'll have real people again and do some one-to-one -one sessions. So I did some one-to-one -one sessions. Um, but, I, but I also I knew this, like, this Fit Mind program was something I really wanted. I really believed in it, and it, and it was getting awesome results for the women that I was having through it. So I began to sell it um, last year for around about £550. And that was quite a big step up, right? It was the same thing, there was nothing different about it. I had a little bit more experience, more confidence, more certainty in my result because I was getting people through the programme. But what I really wanted to do, and what I was looking, and what I was seeing in the marketplace that other people were doing, was selling coaching programmes that were around about 12 weeks. I just think, what am I gonna do with someone for 12 weeks? I had no idea. They were selling them for about two and a half thousand pounds. That's what I wanted to do, and it was even on my website. You know, I was very open about it. Work with me, two and a half thousand pounds, twelve years. <coughs> I was like, I only want to attract people that are willing to pay that. So I'm going to put the price on my website. I want time wasters that are going to be like, oh, how much? <laughs> Can't afford a hundred pounds. So last year I started to evolve, um, but I still was only earning about five hundred pounds a month. And by then I'd gone fully online, I'd niched, I decided I only want to work with women, um, I only wanted to do weight loss, but I still just wasn't earning any money. Well, you know, not real money. So, this idea of value, this idea of what it's worth to change someone's life became really interesting to me. And one of my clients, Alex, came through my program at the start of this year, this was the very last program that I ran for FitMind, so I'm not running that program anymore. Um, she was one of the one of the last group of people to come through my program. Now, there was an interesting thing about Alex is that she was very, very scared about spending five hundred pounds on herself. It was a huge amount of money to her. I think she was working in a charity shop. She was a mum of a couple of kids, lived on a farm, I think, up north. But she was desperate to lose weight, and she's writing to me saying, this is like my last resort, it's my last chance, is this gonna work, will it work for me? I said, well, it, you know, it will work for you if you do the work, right? There's no guarantees, don't ever offer any guarantees on my work at all. <coughs> but she was the one that was most scared about the investment. She was the one that ended up spending more money because she asked to spread the payments. So I you know, said, well, this is the cash value of the program. So she spent more than anyone else. And here's the interesting thing, she lost the most weight. Right? It could just be a coincidence, yeah? She worked the hardest. She did everything that was asked of her. And in just over eight weeks, she lost over 30 pounds. It's over two stone. That's 15 kilos. 15 kilos in eight weeks. It was incredible. But the incredible thing about Alex, it wasn't the weight that she lost. She stopped having the panic attacks. She'd not been able to leave the house in about a year. She'd not even been able to think about having a career or having a life outside of the farm and the children and a little bit of charity work that she did. And in eight weeks, her whole life changed. Her whole life changed. And I caught up with her um, the other day just to check in, make sure she's still doing okay. <coughs> Look how hard we are on ourselves. Um, I have the odd times where I have a lapse. I don't know if you can read it very well. Um, so she says, I'm not 100% success. I said, Alex, can I please share your story? Because I think people will be inspired by what you've done. And she's like, oh, but I haven't, you know, still not at my goal. She's not reached her weight loss goal yet. But I mean, that's a success, right? She lost over 30 and she kept it off all of that way. So she's had that weight off for, for, for almost a year now. So I was thinking, this is amazing. This is getting results. Um, this, this, and people that pay money seem to be paying more attention to what I'm doing, to the value that I'm giving. So um, I think I'm going to have to, we're running about halfway through my slides, I'm going to whisk through a bit, bit faster. So um, this year I 
went fully integrate, integrated with the hypnotic tools into more structured coaching programs. So this is how my business looks today. The minimum investment for my 12 week program is £3,000. That's if they've got a discount. So the actual published price of my program is four and a half thousand. And the value of what I'm charging now is not for my time, it's not for how many sessions, it's not whether I can snap my fingers and get you the result in an hour or two with your eyes closed. It's in the actual result. That's where the value is. That's where the value comes from. That's what, you, that's what I'm charging for, okay? And people are paying it. I know it's hard for me to believe for a while <laughs> why someone will pay me £3,000 just to have, you know, 12 one-off, 12 one-hour sessions with me. Really? What, and they'd be so happy about that, they'd come back for more, and they'd ask for more coaching. They'd sign up for me for another six months or a year. Really? Would they do that? Yes. So who does that? Who am I, are my clients millionaires? <laughs> I'm not gonna play Claire's video because we're short on time. Um, but if you'd like to see, I've got a YouTube channel. It's in its infancy, but it's something that I'm really excited and, and that I like to do YouTube. Um, so check out my YouTube channel. You can watch some of my clients' transformations. Um, again, my clients tend to have, I tend to attract, you know, like attracts like. My clients are very hard on themselves. She lost 18 pounds. She was a bit disappointed, like she wanted to lose 20, 24 pounds. But she lost 18 pounds in the 12 weeks we worked together. But for Claire, um, the difference was having a new relationship after her husband left her for a woman 10 years younger and two stone lighter. She'd lost a little bit of her self-esteem and her confidence. And so she started a new relationship. She tripled her income. This became a theme amongst my clients as well. How is this happening? Why are they earning more money when they're working with me? And really the actual body, the physical result became secondary. Yeah? It became secondary to what she was, what she was really achieving. Um, again, this is super tiny. What was I thinking putting that on there? I can't even read it and I'm right next to it. Um, these are all the ways I get, my, my clients do these um, feedback loops, so everything I do in my coaching is very much about, I want the client to understand why they've had the change. Because if they can understand why they've had the change, they can also understand how they can then replicate that in other areas of their life. They can learn about themselves more, they can go inside. Remember I said I was all about external, what was happening around me and reacting. I really want my clients to be empowered and learn about themselves from the inside. Um, so this is a client, she's on week five of my program. She wrote this this week. I said, can you tell me 50 ways this program has um, positive, positively influenced your values? We do a values assessment. I'll, there's a slide on this in a minute. Um, you can't read it. It's preparing me to face setbacks and overcome them. So it's nothing to do with weight loss, right? Um, it's helping me see I can reach my goals. It's helping me see um, it's allowed me to realise the key is inside me, it's empowered me to never go back, it's made me forgive myself. This is the kind of change that, that we're getting, right? So how do we create transformation for our clients? Whether you're doing body transformation, whether it's um, transforming their fears, anxieties, <coughs> um, resolving issues for them, how do we get a transformation? Does anyone have like a one-line answer to that? Anyone? Got anything clever to say? Get <laughs> clients to imagine shit differently. How? <laughs> Get clients to imagine shit differently. To imagine shit differently. <laughs> yeah. Diets work on the body, hypnosis works on the mind. Diets work on the body, hypnosis works on the mind. Okay, I like that. That's what people saying. Did you have that already? Did you just make I that? used that years ago. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, how do we get them to have a transformation? How do we get them to like push to go that bit further? Like, can that really happen in an hour? Does it? I mean, does it? Yes. Yeah, it really. it. Hmm. Courage and empower them. Yeah. So we believe that, right? We do believe we can get real transformation in an hour. Um, but what stops us? Or what, what kind of gets in the way of hypnotherapists? I hear so many, like, I see really successful hypnotherapists that are like, they're still waiting to feel confident. They're still waiting to kind of, like, feel like, like they're not an imposter. They're still waiting to, is this, is this shit real? And I think there was a presentation that I missed yesterday by um, James saying that, you know, it's just, none of it's really real or it's just kind of made up stuff, right? So I missed it, but... So I think there's a lot, we have, we have this idea, you know, of, of how are we creating this change, and then we hook onto the idea that it's the hypnosis. It's 
because I'm a hypnotist, it was because I'm using these hypnotic tools, these protocols, and I was sat listening to a conversation yesterday and all these words were mentioned that went over my head and it was like, oh, I'm using the, you've got some, Gary's got some. It's like all the words of the different protocols. Like, What's that? I don't really know what that is. I just like help people, I just talk to. So, if we want transformation in our clients, what I want <coughs> to kind of, as we go to the end of the presentation, to give to you is that the energy that you give out is what's drawn to you, right? Like, I don't like the sort of way the law of attraction is explained, but, you know, what you put out there is what comes towards you. I had all these ADHD clients for years when I was in Colombia, and eventually I realized, that's me. That was my brain. My brain <coughs> works in that way as well. I've got those kind of tendencies. That's the way that I think. I like, why is this all? And I did all this research to help my clients and ADHD, and I was like, fuck, that's me. That's been me all my life. So what the energy we give out comes, comes back to us. So if we want to serve our clients, because I think everyone here, I'm kind of guessing, that is it. It's not you want to mess with people's minds. It is because you want to help people. You know, when we looked at the beginning, why be a hypnotist? Because you want to help them grow. You want to help them evolve. You want to have more fun. Like, is everyone having fun? No, you are. <laughs> You know, you're having fun. Awesome. Having fun in um, in your work. Is it fulfilling? Are you having good relationships with your clients? You know, when they used to come in for one or two sessions, I'd kind of miss them. I know we're not supposed to get our needs met through our clients, but let's be realistic. Like, we, we, we get something out of this as well, right? Otherwise, why do it? We get something out of helping people. We enjoy it. So how can you, you know, have these fulfilling relationships? working less hours, earning more money, and still be that kind of like cool, unique, have that hypnotist vibe, um, still get to delve into people's minds. So my way of doing it is to have the best of both worlds, is to be a hypnotic coach, to have a hypnotic coaching business. It gives me everything that I want. It gives me the ability to still have that cool edge and to use those kind of really deep, juicy, sexy as I call them tools where we can just get straight to the point it's like that needs to shift that needs to change it's done right but it also gets me um, it gets my client a chance to really go from survive into thrive mode where they're achieving so much more they're not just getting rid of a fear or a phobia you know they're having a more fulfilling career they're having better relationships they're feeling amazing in their body so three steps to the out of all of the things that I did and all the mistakes that I made that I won't take you through, it's a bit of a point there. Um, the best thing, the first step, is to get your own coach. And when I was looking at all these coaches charging all this money for, for three or four sessions or 12 sessions, and I wanted to do that, but I'd never experienced being coached myself. So how are you ever gonna do anything? like? I know some people say, even as, as hypnotherapists, they say, you know, I'm not very hypnotic, I don't go into hypnosis easily, but you know, we've all had the experience of hypnosis. We know what our clients are experiencing when they're sat in that chair. So if you're interested in, in being a coach or in changing your business, go and have that experience of coaching. Go and be coached. Because I, the hypnosis changed my life completely. It got me over so many issues and problems, and it was fast, and it did everything it said on the tin. But coaching has taken my life to another level that hypnosis could never get close to, right? Coaching has transformed and transported me to a place that's you know, even beyond my dreams. It's not beyond my dreams now, but it's definitely beyond the dreams I had even two or three years ago when I never thought I'd get out of that one bedroom flat. So what's the benefit of, um, of you getting coached? Or even if you don't get coached, like, you know, Take a photo of this, write this down and do this after it's day. Like, take some action. Don't just come here and absorb and trust your unconscious mind to remember it or whatever. It's great. So take some action. And that's where coaching, you know, you take action. You have accountability. Stop tolerating. What are you tolerating right now about your job, your career, your work as a hypnotist, as a hypnotherapist? Are you tolerating clients you don't really like? Because you just, you know, you want to work with anybody or everybody or you need the money. Where are you putting in your own limitations? Yeah? Start with you. And then you can look at what is it costing you to stay as you are today? 
if things don't change, if you want to grow your business, I don't know how many of you do, but if you want to grow your business, you want to earn more money, if you stay as you are, if you don't take action, what's the implications of that for you, say in five years' time, if nothing changes, right? So this is a really good place to start and, and, and understand. The second step, we've got five minutes left, so I'm going to really do this really quick. Second step, it's you, not the hypnosis. I mean, that's quite self-explanatory. I could spend a lot of time talking about that, but I won't. Um, but it's you. You're powerful. You're transformative. You are what's happening to your client. You are the creator. You are the co-creator of, you know, you're the creator of your reality, of the whole universe. Right? We won't get into that now. <laughs> So it's you, it's not the hypnosis. Yes, use the hypnosis, but remember it's just a tool for you to use. It's you, you are the one creating that change. And the third thing that I, um, I think you need to do in a hypnotic coaching business is understand you need to use the minimum effective dose. You don't need to do too much all at once. I'm always, I'm the person that's always late because I'm so optimistic that I can get so much done. Oh, I can just, I can put a load of washing on before I leave, oh, now I'm late. <laughs> so we always try and do too much. So the power of the small changes, even the power of silence, there hasn't been much of that in the last hour of life. <laughs> but the power of not saying anything, the power of just having eye contact with your client and letting the idea of what you've said sink in these powerful things without even doing anything. Having feedback loops, stopping these feast and famine cycles, yo-yo dieting, like my life, it's all replicated in the same, it's the same way in different areas with my body, with my money, and, and now that's changed. So if you don't offer a next step to your client, if you just wave your hypnotic wand and then click your fingers and put them out the door, you're doing a disservice to them because you've opened up the Pandora's box of possibilities. For that person. You've taken away a problem, a pain, an obstacle for them. What are you going to fill it with? Are you just going to leave them like that? Like you've cracked them open and then you're just going to wash your hands of them and send them out to the big wide world. You can offer them something. They've got these possibilities. They don't even know they've got You know they've got it because you've seen it. You've seen your clients change. They need your, your certainty in them. They need to borrow some of your belief that you have in your clients. They need a little bit of that from you. And that takes more than an hour in your chair. So it's your responsibility to really hold a vision for your clients to be the best version of themselves. So you already have the experience you need. What special training do you need to start doing online coaching? I don't really think you need anything. You might need someone to hold your hand and help you and get, definitely get a coach. But you've got the experience. You already have everything you need to do it. That's the amazing thing about being a qualified therapist. You, you, you don't really need to do anything else. You already have these techniques. It's just a case of knowing how to structure them. You need to have the confidence and the certainty. So again, you know, you need to... You need to tap into that, and a blueprint and a structure for working with people. Like you would maybe have a blueprint or a structure for your <coughs> sessions, you know you would start with rapport or you do this, and then it just becomes second nature. You need to start with a structure. Um, I know we've only got times up. Okay, we're going to go, well, my one final minute. <laughs> um, I'm not, obviously in this hour, I haven't had, I'm not teaching any <coughs> protocols or models that I do. Take a quick of that if you like. These are some of the coaching models I use, the hypnosis stuff you guys know. I just punctuate that into my program. Um, <laughs> huh? Sorry, I thought you were going to try to I know um, we've got another amazing speaker coming on, but um, you know everyone needs a coach. I personally have a fitness coach, a business coach, I have a love coach. I've been talking to people about this, they're like, tell me about your love coach, so come and ask me about it. I have a money coach, that has been awesome. The day that I signed up to work with her, I got two £4,000 clients in that day. I was like, well, this stuff works. <laughs> um, 
So I would just end it with, if you want to get in contact with me, Facebook, this is my Facebook profile, in case you don't know which Sarah Wall I am, if they put an S on my name on any of the programmes, it's Sarah Wall without the S. Um, come and add me on Facebook, send me a message, um, you know, get a coach, I'm not saying that's me. <laughs> um, it depends if you're female and you have a weight loss journey, I can definitely help you as a start. Um, but um, connect, connect, be with the people that are doing more of what you want to do. If it sounds exciting, if you want to be earning that kind of money, you know, mix with those kind of people, mix in those circles, get to know them, and you know, if I can help you with that, then I'd be really happy to. <laughs> How did you learn about how to make an online product? What did that process look like? Um, a lot of kind of my own personal research, so looking at what was already existing in the marketplace, the fact that I'd been through that online program with the fitness coach as well. So in my case, I'm definitely a learning on the job kind of person, where I will go and do something myself, think what I liked about it, what worked for me, and then go and see where I can improve it and do my own version. Copying. So you start with what you did before, it's blueprint, think you want to improve it, and then just... Yeah, okay. yeah. And that's pretty pretty much been my model as well. So every coach I work with, I think, what do I like about what they do and how they do it? How would I put my spin on it, and how could I do it better? Mm -hmm. And I'm very much a kind of learn-on-the-job person. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Where, where do you get your coaches from? And are they the same coaches, or are they completely different people? I do like to change up my coaches. If I have a coach that I feel like I'm still evolving with and growing with and I'm getting a lot from, I'll sign up with them. So quite often I'll sign up more than once with the same coach. Then that's a good sign of a good relationship with that coach, right? Um, but th there's kind of woo-woo answer to it. They, I just find they come into my life at the right time. One of my coaches I saw on Tinder <laughs> last year, um, and I didn't fancy him, but I saw that he was a coach to online fitness professionals. And I thought, well, that looks interesting. Connected with him, ended up spending like £15,000 with him. And um, yeah, you just never know where people are going to come into your life. It might be a hypnosis convention or anywhere else. Thank you. Right, guys. Thank you, Adam. I'm so sorry. I'm That's all right.